Hey there and welcome back to Jovo Wednesday on Dabble Lab. This time we're going to build an Alexa skill on a Google action that saves user specific data into a database. So Jovo offers a variety of database integrations, which you can find in our docs. So for example, um, we offer DynamoDB for stuff that's hosted on AWS. For people that prefer the Google Cloud, we offer a Google Cloud Data Store. We offer a Firestore. No matter where you're hosting your voice apps, you can store user-specific data easily with our database abstraction layer in the user object. Now we'll talk a little bit about this in a, in a minute. For local debugging though, um, the, the best thing is to store stuff in a file-based database and this is the file DB. And so this will create a db.json file uh, which will make it very easy for local debugging. So you don't have to connect to any database or, or anything like that. You can just get started, save data in a JSON file and then debug locally. And we're gonna do this now. And, and so to get started, let's create a new Jovo project with Jovo new, and then let's call it database test. And this will create a new Jovo project and install the NPM dependencies. While the NPM dependencies are installing, let's take a look at the a user class. And so Jovo offers a user class which you can uh, access with uh, this dot dollar user. And so every dollar in front of a variable is one of the reserved objects that Jovo offers. And this user class um, allows you to store user specific data, uh, to store and load data and so on. And so you can access this by accessing the this dot user dot dollar data object and this is what is then later stored into the database and we are going to build a very um, simple voice app based on our hello world template that saves the user's name into a database and then treats the users if they've already saved their name let's take a look let's open the project if you've had a look at the previous videos, you already know how a Jovo project looks like, and this is the logic. And so what we want to do now here is instead of directly accessing the input, we just want to save it to the database. And so we could just going to do this dot user dot data dot name, for example, is this input. So this is saved now and we can now use this to access the information. Okay. And so now we, um, we save stuff to the database. And for example, what we can do is we can have an if else here. And so if this is set, we can just say this.tell and then hello world with the name. And if not, we're going to ask for the name. And so that's our setup. And so let's try it out. Let's do local debugging, type in Jovo run. And as you can see here, this info shows you that a db.json file was created. And so if you go back into our browser, you can find a db folder here. And this is the db.json file, which is empty right now. And so if we now um, open it in the debugger, and open the launch command, it asks me for the name. And so if I go back and take a look at the database, it just um, stores the user ID for now. No user data is saved here. As you can see here in the data object, it's an empty object. But if I now respond with a name, for example, if I respond with Chris, it tells me, hey, Chris, nice to meet you. And if I go and take a look at the database, it says name Chris. Okay, so that, that's it. And you can also um, see the information here right in the debugger. So here you can see um, at the time of the request, the database was empty, but at the time of the response, it saved the name Chris. And so let's, um, let's try it out again. Now that we have saved the name, um, we can also launch again. And it just says, hello world, Chris. And so it already has the name it goes right into um, this statement here and just greets me. And so this is how you can debug database integrations and this is how you can store user-specific data easily uh, with the Jovo database interface. And if you are ready to, after hosting, taking a look at other database integrations, if you're hosting on Lambda, you can use DynamoDB and so on, we can take a look at this in upcoming episodes. See you next time.